you know that most of what you've seen, read, or heard about Billy the Kid is untrue? My name is Gail Cooper. I'm a medical doctor and forensic psychiatrist. My specialty is murder case consultation for the defense. For 20 years, I've used my expertise to uncover the real Billy the Kid. Researching over 40,000 pages of archival documents and books, I've written the revisionist history. It's shocking, it's liberating, and I've written books demolishing the hoaxes, hijacking the history. My talks will share with you what I've found. Cover-ups, misinformation, and fakery, to use Old West lingo, will bite the dust. Billy Bonney, then 19, had his sham arrest on March 21st, 1879, for his pardon bargain with New Mexico Territory Governor Lew Wallace. In exchange for a pardon, he testified in the next month's grand jury in Lincoln against the Santa Fe Ring murderers of anti-ring attorney Houston Chapman. Billy's friend, Lincoln jailer Juan Patron, had offered to incarcerate him and his pal, Tom O'Falliard, in his Lincoln house, instead of Billy's risking assassination and ring-backing Fort Stanton's guardhouse. That put Billy next door to Wallace, who was staying in Jose Montano's house. Two days later, on March 23, 1879's night, in Patron's house, Wallace interviewed Billy about territorial outlaws, which had nothing to do with their bargain. Unbeknownst to Billy, after Chapman's February 18, 1879 murder, to appease outraged citizens but avoid confronting the ring, Wallace faked action by blaming so-called outlaws. That was why he originally pursued Billy. So it's possible that arch-narcissist Wallace never intended to pardon Billy. Evidence is Wallace's chilling March 31, 1879 letter to Secretary of the Interior Carl Schurz eight days after Billy's interview. Hiding Billy's bargain and sham arrest, lying Wallace promoted the outlaw myth. He wrote, a precious specimen nicknamed the kid, whom the sheriff is holding here in the plaza, is an object of tender regard. I heard singing and music the other night. Going to the door, I found the minstrels of the village actually serenading the fellow in his prison. In reality, Wallace knew that the horrific Lincoln County War was less than a year earlier in that town and that Billy was the people's hero. Note that Wallace wrote his interview notes in third person titled Statements by Kid. I'll put parts in first person as Billy's words. They show that Billy thought he was allied with Wallace in saving Lincoln County, while referencing the Santa Fe Rings Lincoln County War Outlawry for context. I told Governor Wallace that there is a cattle trail beginning about five miles above Yellow Lake in a canyon, running a little west of north to Cisnesta del Macho, Mule Spring and continuing around the point of the Capitan Mountains down towards Carrizoso in the direction of the Rio Grande. Frank Wheeler, Jake Owens, and Dutch Chris are supposed to have used this trail, taking a bunch of cattle over. That Owens-Wheeler outfit used this trail for about a year, but that lately their horses had given out, so now they were going to the reservation to make a raid on the Indian horses to work on. Note that Billy alludes to the ring's cattle rustling to supply beef contracts to Fort Stanton and the Mescalero Indian Reservation. The rustlers were organized in Fort Stanton. Before they organized as rustlers, they had been with Pepin's posse. They came from Texas. They were organized before the burning of McSween's house. And after that, they went on their first trip down the county as far as the Coe's Ranch, and thence to the Feliz, where they took the Tunstall cattle. From the Feliz, they went to the Pecos. The rustlers stayed at Seven Rivers, which they left on their second trip for Fort Stanton. On their return back, they killed Chavez boys and the crazy boy, Lorenzo, and the Sanchez boy, 14 years old. They also committed many robberies. 
They broke up after reaching the pickles, promising to return when some more horses got fat. Note that Billy makes clear that Fort Stanton was Ring Outlaw's safe haven. The point is that ringbacked Sheriff George Pepin had used outlaws as his posse in the Lincoln County War to murder anti-ring leader Alexander McSween and burn down his house on July 19, 1878. Billy also reveals his extensive knowledge of outlaws in general and exhibits his biculturalism by highlighting racist murders of Hispanic people. About Shedd's Ranch, I told Governor Wallace that the trail used going from the Seven Rivers to Shedd's was round the southwest part of the Guadalupe Mountains, by a tank on the right hand of trail. From Shedd's, the drives would be over to Las Cruces. Jesse Evans, Frank Baker, killed Jim McDaniels. Reed at Shedd's bought cattle from them, also sold cattle to E.C. Priest, Butcher and Cruces. Note that Billy is explaining that Shedd's ranch, on the way to a slaughterhouse, was one holding place for ring cattle, rustled by Jesse Evans and his boys. Jesse Evans and his boys had been used by Sheriff Brady in his posse to murder Billy's boss, John Tunstall, precipitating the Lincoln County War. Mimbres used to be called Mormon City, situated 30 miles on the road to Cruces from Silver City South. A great many of what are known as West Harden Gang are there. Among them, Joe Olney, known in Mimbres as Joe Hill. He has a ranch in Old Mexico, somewhere near Coralitos. He makes trips up in this country, was at Peñasco not long ago. San Nicolas Spring is about 18 miles from Shed's Ranch, on the road to Tula Rosa. There, Jim McDaniels used to keep stolen Indian horses. The Jones family came from Texas, used to keep saloon at Fort Griffin. The family consists of the father, Jim Jones, John Jones, boy about 10 years old, a girl about 13, and the mother. Marion Turner lives with the family, and he killed a Mexican man at Blazer's Mill just to see him kick. The Jones, John and Jim, killed a man named Riley, a partner of theirs, on the Peñasco three or four years ago. Note that Billy knew the Jones family personally, though they were on the ring side in the Lincoln County War. Most noteworthy in Wallace's notes is his skirting the information that Billy was providing about real criminals associated with the Ring's Lincoln County War atrocities. It is likely that Ring concealing Wallace left out that information in his notes. Evidence that Billy gave that information is in his follow-up letter to Wallace the next day, March 24, 1879. It is in a letter fragment signed Billy, which I authenticated. <laughs>